Three, two, one. <coughs> Pardon me, start again. Oh, Daddy, you're on mute. Hi, we are London Blue Badge Tourist Guides and this is London Stories. My name is Emily. Hello, my name's Danny. My name is Sarah. I'm Anthony, also known as Mr. Londoner. You have to study for two years and pass a pretty rigorous set of exams. It was the hardest course I've ever done, 18 months of pure intensity. Before they'll finally give you one of these, the old blue badge. You learn so much about London and you know, visit all the little hidden corners as well as the big sites. Which I just thought was, was so much fun and I just learned so much, met some incredible people. I mean I loved it. I think one of the best kept secrets about London is that London is actually a forest. So 8.6 million of us are crammed into around 600 square miles, alongside about over 8 million trees, plants, animals and insects, which according to one UN definition means that we are technically a forest. So that makes London the largest urban forest in the world. Well, you might have heard of London Zoo, which is in Regent's Park. Well, it opened in 1828 and the first animals to enter the zoo actually came from the Tower of London. You see, the Tower of London was a bit of a menagerie. There was an elephant there, a polar bear, some lions, and in the end, the animals started to get quite aggressive at the Tower of London, so they moved them to Regent's Park and opened I'm not sure if this counts, but in the Tate Britain there's a painting uh, by J.M.W. Turner and he was a superstar in his day in the early 1800s called Fishing at Blythe Sands. And it looks perfect, it's a lovely seascape, beautiful, would sell for thousands and thousands of pounds today. And uh, it's been restored but it had lots of cuts in it. And the cuts are because Turner decided, I guess, he, wasn't, he didn't really like the painting that much and so he used it as a cat flap and it's from all the cat's claws. In William Shakespeare's day, in the theatres at Bankside, women were forbidden from treading the boards. It was considered unseemly for a woman to act. So young men played women's parts, and some of these young men became very adept at moving around the stage in these complicated costumes. And they became known as the queens of the drag, and thus, Bankside gave the world the drag queen. I love that. You can get everything here. London is a very multicultural city and at one stage London was the largest port in the world which meant we had goods coming in here from everywhere all around the globe and they opened up shops they opened up restaurants and and brought in their flavors and their cooking ideas and dishes when it comes to london we've got fish and chips we've got jelly deals um <laughs> we've got afternoon tea but you've also got the most amazing indian food chinese cuisine persian moroccan french there are street markets where you'll see the food being created in front of you beautiful rustic pubs, gorgeous restaurants. I would, I would say that it is delicious, absolutely divine. Now I've probably watched too many Austin Powers movies, but I would love to go back to the London of the swinging 60s. Imagine it, Carnaby Street, the King's Road, the miniskirt, all those fab fashions driving around in an E-type Jaguar. That'll do nicely. I love uh, Mary Jane Seacole, uh, who was a Jamaican nurse in the 1800s. She came over to London, she applied to work with Florence Nightingale, um, but uh, didn't get to be part of her team of nurses who were going out to tend to the wounded in the Crimea War of the 1850s. She raised her own money, went straight out to the front line, set up her British hospital, and uh, would go out to the soldiers literally fighting uh, on the front line to give them food or to take the wounded back to her British hospital and tend to them. So many films have been shot in London, but I think my favourite ones, uh, James Bond 
and Spider-Man. So the latest Spider-Man film was filmed in London and it's really clear to see like all around the River Thames and Tower Bridge and the Tower of London and the Shard as well. It's just so clear and you can step in the footsteps of the actors, which is really cool. I love Bankside, just south of the river. Home to Borough Market, home to Tate Modern and Shakespeare's Globe. There's a bit of grit in the oyster here. This is still very much a bohemian neighbourhood and that's what makes it fun. That and the great bars and restaurants. For me, it has to be Greenwich in South East London on the banks of the River Thames. And it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You've got Greenwich Park. You've got so many attractions to visit like the Royal Maritime Museum and Cutty Sark. Greenwich Market is a must for lunch if you're in Greenwich. And you've just got so much space to just sit by the River Thames and enjoy. Probably Hampstead Heath which is a big park on a hill in North London. And you look down the hill and you can see all of London, all the skyscrapers, the Dome of St Paul's Cathedral. The view is just, just incredible. Well, being an art historian, it's got to be the National Gallery. The best time is opening time when you walk through an empty gallery and you're on your own with some of the greatest masterpieces in the world. <laughs> I'm super proud to live here. I'm really proud to be part of it, you know? I love London, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. For me, it's many things to be open and to you know, actually engage and meet new people, learn about new cultures, because that's what you can do in London. There's over 200 languages in London, so many cultures, so many different shops and you know events going on and restaurants to try. There's, so much to see and do. London to me means home. I love the city's creativity, its energy. I love the fact that it's constantly reinventing itself. You can be whoever you want to be in London and that's what makes it the best city in the world. I have to use the words of Paddington Bear for this one. And he said, in London, everyone is different. And that means anyone can fit in. And I love that about London. Anyone can fit in. So this was London Stories. Until we meet again. Bye.